hello. Thank you for tuning in to um, our project on experimental research design. Um, my partner, Ebony, and I were given this task. Um, Ebony did the handout and uh, prepared the article review. Um, and we both put in information into this um, presentation for you. Today we'll be looking at four topics um, of experimental research that I thought were important to share. Um, those topics are what is it exactly, um, designs of experimental research, uh, the characteristics of experimental research, and challenges and a clip on examples. Um, so we will get started on that by first looking at exactly what um, is it. So the definition of experimental design um, coming from our book, this is what it said that it was, is that in the experimental research at least one variable is manipulated or changed uh, while other uh, relevant variables are controlled, um, not changed or changed a little. Um, and the effect on one or more dependent variables is observed. So we're looking at the outcome of those changes in um, experimental research. Experimental research is a very commonly used type of design. Um, a lot of biology classes or chemistry classes or educational classes use this to have a controlled setting group and then use use that same group but then change the way that they might interact with the experiment to get a specific outcome. So for this to be a true experimental design, for, for an experiment to be truly that design, has to have um, a certain definition and meet a certain thing. And so a true experimental designs are characterized by the random selection of participants and the random assignment of the participants to the group in the study. Um, the researcher, or you in that situation, uh, would have complete control over the variables. Um, you get to uh, ha pick which ones the controlled, you get to pick how they're changed, um, and so it can have the effect on the variable is directly due to what you choose to change as the researcher. Um, for these reasons, as it's easily controlled and, and for just the, the simplicity of the experiment. Um, it's, it's known as one of the better, the best types of research designs. Um, it's easy to use. It's very simple. Um, there's nothing extraneous to, to do to get to your outcomes. Criteria that it needs to meet to be considered true ex experimental design would be that you're going to have two groups. You're going to have a controlled group and you're going to have an experimental group. Um, you're going to have a researcher, which is you in that situation, manipulated, changed uh, variable. That means that you're going to have one control, one, one that stays the same, and one experimental that you're going to change and, and um, make different the, than the original controlled. It's going to be randomly assigned. Um, and so these three points, these three criteria, would make it a true experimental design. The purpose of a experimental design would be to test a hypothesis, um, your guess or your um, a statement at the beginning, uh, the problem 
um, to establish a cause and effect relation. So you do one thing and then it turns out this way because, and um, that's the reason for using this design. Um, it's been known to represent the strongest chain of reasoning of a cause and effect. Um, I tripped, why? Because my shoe was untied. There's a strong connection, you can see um, a direct line because why you tripped because my shoe was untied and so in an experimental design you see that cause and effect relationship um, and you're able to see clearly why that something happened a certain way. Next topic is the designs of experimental research. And so an experiment will typically involve a comparison of two groups. Like we said earlier, a controlled and an experimental group. Um, and it's going to be a comparison of usually one of these three types. A comparison of two approaches, an A versus B group. Um, a comparison of a new approach and the existing approach, or the comparison of different amounts of a single approach. So a little bit of A, and then a lot of A group. There are considered to be four uh, groups of experimental designs. A pre-experimental, a true experimental, a quasi-experimental, and factorial this, uh, design. Experimental research has characteristics that make it different um, than other other research designs. Those characteristics would be Manipulation or change of the independent variable is the primary or the, the best characteristic um, that makes it different than any other types of research. Um, this research design is guided by at least one hypothesis or one problem that you're trying to prove. Um, you can have more than one, um, but usually you're going to pick that hypothesis and you're going to use that as your guiding factor um, on how you conduct your experiment. Uh, two groups in experimental research like we have said over and over and over um, experimental and the control. The experimental is the group that receives that new treatment that you want to test out um, and then the controlled group is the group that receives the a different treatment altogether or it's treated like it was in the beginning of it, um, the one that, you're, that you don't change. There are steps in this process. Um, just like any other uh, research design, you're going to follow steps to get to your final conclusion. Um, in research design, there are six steps. So experimental design has these steps for the process. You're first going to select and define a problem. You're going to select participants and measuring instruments. You're going to prepare a re research plan. You're going to execute that research plan. Um, and you're going to look at the data itself. And then you're going to look at your conclusions and, and see if you have um, answered your problem, if you've come up with that answer, or you've proven your hypothesis. So just like most of the research designs, they will follow the steps um, of this process very similar. Just like in any uh, research design, in any experiment, you're going to run into a challenge um, you may hit a hit a wall or you may come across something that you weren't predicting to happen um, so you're always looking for the validity in that 
um, there are many different types of validity. Um, t you can look specifically at those different types. Um, in chapter 10, it goes into great detail of our book on, on that. Um, a couple of challenges is that um, you might have a lack of sufficient exposure to treatments. Um, you might um, fail to make the treatments different from one another. So your controlled group um, is one way. And then when you go to make your experimental group, you might not make it as, um, as different as the uh, controlled group. Uh, it may not be as, as experimental as you would like. Um, the experiment can only be considered valid if the results obtained are due only to manipulated independent variable and if they are generalizable to individuals beyond the experimental setting. So you want other people to look at your experiment and know that know what your two groups are and then know what you changed from group A to group B or vice versa. Some examples, like I said earlier, this is a very common used research design, but uh, below is a link that you can uh, type in and it'll take you to a YouTube video that goes through just a couple of um, examples of research design being used, of experimental research design being used. Um, it's a very short video if you want to learn more about it just to make yourself more aware. Um, it's a good video to watch, so feel free to to do that on your own time. Um, but before we conclude our presentation, let's look back at the, um, the characteristics of this, just so you know that when you see this, you'll be able to say, oh, that's experimental research design. So remember that um, the change of one variable um, is what makes it different um, than other types of research. You're going to have your two groups, and you're going to have your controlled group, and you're going to have your experimental. You're going to keep one the same, and you're going to change the other to figure out if your hypothesis is either true or false. Um, again, steps in this process would be to select and define a problem. You're going to select your, your groups and your way that you're going to measure your results. You're going to prepare your research plan, and then you're going to execute or go through with this research plan. You're going to then look over your data and conclude yourself if they've um, made your hypothesis true or false. So thank you for tuning in to our uh, presentation on experimental research. I hope that you were able to learn something from this. Thanks again, and have a great night.